What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with an amazing man, Victor Sagalovsky. Victor, what's going on, brother? How are you? Hey, Jay. How's it going? It's awesome to have you guys uh, have you here. Uh, So you guys, so Victor is the founder of Lightwater or drinklightwater.com, which is a fascinating uh, technology or way to look at um, understanding what deuterium depleted water is, which we're going to get into that conversation today. Uh, I would actually say that understanding why you should be taking, drinking or consuming deuterium depleted water is one of the most important things you can do as we move into this next 25 to 30 years, as I would say, the golden age frontier. Um, but Victor uh, basically is a polymath scientist, a writer, and an entrepreneur. He's a brilliant dude. Him and I have had many conversations over text about the world and what is going on right now. And so it's an honor to have him here today. Like I said, we're going to go over his company and the conversation today. But as I always do on the Jay Campbell podcast, like, you know, how did Victor Sagalowski get on the Jay Campbell podcast here today? <laughs> how did I, Jay? <laughs> only, only you will know that. Only you know that. I don't. <laughs> but uh, I guess, uh, I guess the latest greatest comes across your desk first, right? <laughs> there you go, brother. There you go. Um, well, obviously, you know, I reached out to you. I spoke to, um, you know, your partner. I mean, you guys are partners in, in Lightwater, correct? Yeah. Robert Slovak, my yep. co-founder. Yep. We started yep. this company together. Yep. So, so Robert and I had a really amazing conversation. And then, you know, he told me all these things about uh, Lightwater. And, you know, I reached out to you. My copywriter reached out to you. We started to communicate. And the rest, they say, is history. So, you know, so to, you know, let's just talk about a little about your background. You know, how did you get involved in understanding deuterium depleted water? Like, what led you down that path? Well, about two thousand four, I, I at about in about two thousand four, I already had ten years into uh, alternative health and uh, educating people, educating myself, uh, doing different things that were uh, actually quite pioneering in the uh, in the uh, natural health space. Um, but so, you know, I'm always looking for the upstream solution to common health problems or even just aging itself. You know, I think I've always been kind of an armchair gerontologist from a young age trying to understand uh, why people age. And it's always been something that has been a hobby of mine in terms of understanding all the mechanisms uh, underlying our aging process all the way down to the biochemistry of it. So around 2004, I read an article called In Search of the Fountain of Youth. And uh, this article was written by a a NASA NASA scientist. And he talks about, he talked about deuterium depleted water. And to me, the science just made sense. So uh, a few years later, I found a published study by a scientist in Turkey that actually showed definitively 
how deuterium damages your mitochondria. So I was hooked. I was hooked on this from, from 2004 on this concept. Now it took another, uh, what, uh, you know, up until 2018 to really get to the point where we had water to import in this country. And that's because this is a concept that is, uh, 60 years old. It's a discovery that's 60 years old, but the, but the ability to actually have it in your hand and actually, uh, use it as a tool for health is something that's very recent uh, because it's just hasn't it's very difficult to remove deuterium from water uh, now for those that don't, don't know deuterium is simply an isotope of hydrogen so hydrogen being the most abundant element in the universe being the first thing created in the big bang if you believe the big bang regardless most <laughs> of the universe most of the universe consists of hydrogen so hydrogen is the simplest element in nature because it's the only one that doesn't have a neutron it's a one right. electron one proton as simple as you can get and that's why everything in nature loves it everybody's everything is looking for the path of least resistance so that proton from hydrogen becomes very important and it's how we generate atp adenosine triphosphate which is the which is our energy right so our our energy currency so uh deuterium is just hydrogen with an extra with a neutron so it makes it twice as heavy Unfortunately, this also binds with oxygen to create water. And so when you have a deuterium that binds with oxygen to create water, you have what's called heavy water or semi-heavy water. Normal water is hydrogen, two hydrogen and oxygen. That original hydrogen, which is the primordial hydrogen, which does not have a neutron, which is the bulk of the hydrogen that exists, you know, over 98%, uh, is, is um, H2O. When you add a deuterium, then you get because it has that deuterium. And uh, why is it a problem? Well, let's look at let's look at two perspectives on this. One perspective is you have a glass of water, and in this glass of water, you've got three drops of HDO. I mean, three drops is not very much. It actually translates to about 150 parts per million, uh, or 155 parts per million, which is the which is the average in the planet, which is what the ocean is. One. 5.76. So um, now that doesn't seem like a big problem. Three drops and three drops in a glass of water. However, when you look at how much deuterium you have in your blood plasma, it actually becomes shocking because you have four to six times more deuterium in your blood than you have the most important uh, constituents and nutrients that you need to survive: glucose, magnesium, potassium. And so, and so when you look at it this perspective you go wow there's a lot of this deuterium in our bodies and it has absolutely no use certainly there's some argument that it has some use in early bone development however when you look at the energy production mechanism the way we make energy the way we use energy it has absolutely no place in our biology and yet it is something that is impinging on us and contaminating us non-stop from the time we're born to the time we're dead so i looked at this in 2004 and saw wow this is potentially an upstream solution to the problem of aging, right? And I don't like to use the term anti-aging. I like to use the term pro-youthing because nice. that's really what that's really what we're going for. Not right. a double negative anti and aging. We're up yeah, pro-youthing. Awesome. Okay. Right. We yeah. want to maintain youth as long as we can our life. You can you can it's been shown, it's been proven that you that that all the most most physical aging that you see is from UV damage. Now obviously you know you look on the outside how you look how, how you feel and and what you put in your body like my friend uh, once told me actually 30 years ago he said by the time you're 50 you wear the face you deserve and <laughs> i never that's right that. that's actually a really good that. point and that's yeah. because of that's because of external and internal well let's say everything internal is fine okay externally you have uv and that damages your skin because you could look at somebody that is 90 plus years old and have always kept their skin covered in certain places and you'll see that skin is as soft and subtle and new as a baby's so what is it that actually makes us age and get old because you can maintain you could look old, but you could still have the vitality and the youth uh, of somebody young and vice versa. You could look very young, you could be 30, 35 years old and have the mitochondria of somebody that's door, you know, it's 90 years old. So when we look sure. at this, we look, we hone in on the mitochondria and the mitochondria is what determines how much youth and vitality we have. If you mm -hmm. look at somebody that's 10 years old and you look in a cell and they have 100,000 of these little factories, these mitochondria factories, and you look at that same person maybe uh, 70 years later, you know, and they're 90 or even 80 or even 70. But you're going to see that instead of that 100,000 uh, 
100,000 factories, mitochondria factories swimming in the cell, you may be going to have 1,000 or less. You know? So you have a rapid decline uh, as you get older. Uh, so as you get, uh, so here's, a, here's an interesting one. So the chances of somebody that's 90 making it to 100, pretty good, you know? I mean, they're, they're like, it's like one out of, uh, uh, you know, one out, of every, one out of every 10 or one out of every 20. I forget what the actual statistics is of somebody that's made it to 90 will reach 100. Now, when you get to 100, the chances of that 100, that centenarian making it to 110, now becomes one out of every 700. This has statistically been shown. So one out of every 700 centenarians only makes another 10 years because you have this wow. rapid decline at the very end. You know, it's like a, it's like a slow, gradual aging process. And then and then as you get and then it's like and then it's like a uh, snowball, uh, you know, go speeding down a mountain at the very end. So the goal is to maintain the mitochondrial integrity, efficiency and health throughout your whole life. So you have that vitality and youthful uh, expression uh, your entire life. So even you might look old, but you have the you have the mitochondria of somebody that's rather young. And if you have that energy level of somebody young, all your other markers will also uh, conform to that, you know, cardiovascular, bone density, brain, so forth and so on. And, and that and, and all this has primarily to do with dehydration, the dehydration of your tissues. And dehydration is a very it's a very interesting and complex subject because none of the water you drink actually is the water that's inside your mitochondria. So if you consider that, ponder that for a while, I said none of the water that you drink makes it inside your mitochondria. All the water inside your mitochondria essentially is homemade. It's actually water that's made inside your mitochondria from that proton, from the hydrogen and the oxygen as a byproduct of the manufacture of ATP, which is the currency of our biology. So we can go in deep on the on the uh, biochemistry of this because there's a whole new science around deuterium depletion called deuteronomics, which 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 endeavors to explain how deuterium is managed by the body and what happens when it's not properly managed. Or we can just or we can just hang out in the superficial realms and we can you know discuss kind of like the uh, you know the. the well, I'd, li I'd like to go deeper with you because I have a very sophisticated audience. But let's first go back bigger picture. Like, where does deuterium come from? Like. What made a great, you know, great, great question. Great right. question. And, and if you go to the uh, if you go to our website, drinklightwater.com, there's a history article that I wrote that really gets into depth on all of this. Uh, but just to just briefly, it's very simple. When the when when the in the beginning in the Big Bang, you had hydrogen. OK, hydrogen. And then and then uh, it was like million. It was like in the first minute, it was like millions and millions of degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius or Kelvin, whatever you call it, but it was pretty hot <laughs> beyond, beyond what we, beyond what we can imagine. So, right. So in this, you had, you had, you had, you had uh, fusion happen and you had, and you had uh, hydrogen form and then helium. Now in between the first and second element, you had to create deuterium. Deuterium is a transition element because you have to have that neutron. So now you have that proton, that neutron and electron. Okay. So before the two protons come in for element number two, you have deuterium is somewhere in between. As the universe cooled, it cooled down too quickly and some deuterium was trapped. It was trapped in between hydrogen and helium. So that's how it happened. And so it's been stuck here ever since. And, uh, and it's been primarily constant uh, from, the from the beginning of the universe till now. And, and, uh, and on our planet, it's actually been gradually rising. And so I think my personal belief uh, based on all the data that I've consumed is that, and uh, and geologic record is that when Homo sapiens sapien was evolving, when we were getting when we were getting our footing on this planet, 150 to 200,000 years ago, we had less deuterium. So we evolved in a environment where the water we consumed and the food that we consumed that 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 grew with that water was about 15 to 20 percent lower than what we have now. And in fact, those populations that have been studied for their increased longevity uh right. in fact still have these types of conditions today very very interesting so, can you share a little bit about those specific population groups that have the extra longevity like where they're found absolutely so uh this all started this the concept you know deuterium is fairly new and it's even it hasn't even been 100 years since we discovered that that hydrogen had an isotope 
Right. And if it was, and if it wasn't discovered back then in the in the 1933, then we wouldn't have had we wouldn't have had the atomic age. We wouldn't have had atomic bombs. I mean, this is serious, right? That we discovered this, and so because of the discovery of deuterium, we have the nuclear age. Okay. And so and so I would like to, you know, I propose that hey, 20th century was all about discovering deuterium and understanding what nukes are and how to and what the atomic age is. And let's make 21st century about about deuterium depletion and understanding what that is, because that's more that's more germane to our own health and longevity. So back in the late 50s, about 58, a uh, young geratologist by the name of uh, Berdyshev and his uh, and, a, and a biophysicist by the name of Radimov uh, were in a university in uh, Tomsk, which is in Siberia. And uh, they were they were uh, spurned on by their older uh, colleagues to try to figure out why particular two particular uh, populations. There were more, but these two in particular, uh, the Altaians and the Akutians, had had uh, four times more centenarians than anybody else in Russia. Now, this was very peculiar to them because these people live in a very harsh environment. They live in a they live in a near Arctic like Eskimo environment. They don't have any they don't have any fresh juices, vegetables, you know, they eat raw meat and they and they and they and they burn coal and and wood for for fuel. So it's got a lot of soot, a lot of carbon. These are not this is not what you traditionally would term as a healthy environment in which they live. And yet they had not only increased longevity, but also were able to conceive children into into uh, advanced age, you know, up into their 60s naturally uh, for women to conceive. And men, uh, I think the oldest, the oldest natural uh, the oldest father uh, naturally is in his 90s. So, so, so they started. They studied. Started studying these people. You know, the the, the proposal came. This was figure out why they're living older than everybody else. And after a couple of years, they honed in on the water. And what was it about the water? I said, well, look, this water they're drinking is glacial water, great glacial runoff. And uh, and 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 this is it. So then they they go and here's the proof. It has 16% less of this deuterium thing that was only discovered, you know, less than 20 years before at that time in the late 50s. And this is why we think they live longer is because they have 60% less deuterium than everybody else is drinking. So, go, oh, wow, this is this is this is interesting. Let's see if we can prove this concept. And they did. They, they proved it with they proved it with the germination of seeds. They proved it with mouse studies, uh, for, uh, uh, mammal studies, dogs. Um, other eukaryotic organisms all the way up to humans. And then they ended up publishing this in uh, 60, and then they published again in 66 in English uh, for the whole, and then it was, then it was uh, uh, validated by Western scientists in the US. And there was some interest around this. And then the kind of in the 70s, the interest kind of died off uh, right after it was discovered that, uh, or not discovered, but it was proposed and shown and accepted at a, at an isotopic conference at Argonne National Laboratory that, that, you know, it was proposed that is deuterium twice the weight of protium? Yes, it is. Well, is all DNA made up of primarily hydrogen bonds? Well, yes, it is. Well, would it would would you say that if you have a deuterium in the place of a hydrogen bond, that because of its weight, it would distort the shape of that DNA of DNA and, and other enzyme molecules that would ultimately lead to errors in its transcription? And, and it was says, of course, it's twice the weight. Of course, it's going to distort the shape of everything that's going to anything that Anything that anything that's that has a is a place for hydrogen and deuterium comes in, it's going to wreak havoc. It's like putting a it's like a, it's like a, a, a it's like a bull in a china shop putting a square peg into a round hole. But then they agreed on this and they kind of disappeared because these, after all, these were academics. They said, "Is right. deuterium damaging to the DNA?" Yes, it is. Okay, moving on. <laughs> and. Because that's what academics do. They 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 can they they can make great discoveries, but then it might take 20, 30 years for 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 commercial industry to come around and, and right. say and say I want to you know I want to use this discovery to the advantage of everybody. And in order to do that, that can only come through commerce. So so it was my partner in Russia that had also as a young as a young, as a teenager had read this <laughs> original study uh, in the in 1960 in Russia. So when he made some money, he he threw uh, tens of millions of dollars and tried to figure out how to uh, remove the cetarium from water because he was obsessed, as many people were, like myself, into into in in this in this biological revelation because this is a complete revelation for for everybody and it's a revelation for our future because right. if we ever hope to go to the live on the moon or Mars, we're going to have to have water that's deuterium depleted to one survive long term space. Uh, 
uh, habitation and two, the water on Mars is, you know, eight times, I think, more deuterium. So your biology will deteriorate very quickly and you will succumb to a lot of uh, a lot of diseases very quickly. So I wrote an article about that. In fact, I'm trying to get Elon Musk to read it because he'll understand how important this problem is and it has to be solved way ahead of uh, way ahead of time, kind of like what they're sol the problems they're solving, you know, 10, 20 years ahead of time colonization so it's really really important and it comes in a, and it comes in a, it comes at a very uh comes at the perfect like everything it comes at the right time right there's so, no coincidence in the universe well let me just add to that um obviously i told you when you and i first started texting you know once i talked to robert and i started researching about this and uh i had some up in uh you know when i was up in reno I mean, I was mind blown. I mean, you know, being like you, very naturally inquisitive and, you know, a scientist at nature, I was like, why is the world not more aware of this? Like, what the hell is going on? Like, this is insane. Like the science is, you know, completely, you know, conclusive. There's no debate about any of this. I mean, can, can you kind of share why this isn't getting the notoriety or the acclaim or the recognition that it needs? I think eventually it will. I think that I think one of the issues is is there's no is when there's a problem, there's that problem has to be met with, has to be met with a solution. Okay, right. like, like I notice, especially in our current uh, uh, health and political and pandemic climate, everybody's so fast to point out problems, but very few are very few are quick to actually offer solutions at the same mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So if you point out a problem and no solution is given, then not much focus is given to that until solution comes you know somebody in in the 90s had had um, honed in on the deuterium issue as well and they said well i'm gonna uh, this is a, this is a, this is a credible revelation i'm gonna get myself a, a liter of this water and uh, it cost them a thousand bucks <laughs> wow okay back then so so there's there was no practical way to uh to really remove deuterium from from the body but it you know but it the drinking deuterium depleted water is not the only way to keep your deuterium management system in the body healthy, as Laszlo Boros, Dr. Laszlo Boros points out through deuteronomics. It just took, you know, everything, everything takes time and it takes, you have to be brave to introduce a new concept. Yeah. I, I personally never went through medical school. Uh, I, I have, I have a, I have a college degree in, in it's a, it's a, in multimedia performing arts. Okay. So as I like, as I like to say, when the film and drama majors know more about science, right. medicine and the doctors were in trouble. Now back up a little bit. I have been studying biochemistry for 20 plus years privately right. and, 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 and taken plenty of courses in college. But what, 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 what I, what I realized is that when you're in that academic environment there is no incentive to move the needle forward right in fact you're right. taking a risk you're taking a big risk absolutely the needle forward okay absolutely so, so it takes somebody that 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 can bridge bridge two worlds you have the world that's academic that doesn't speak <laughs> the language of normal people or or or, or your basic person that doesn't have that doesn't know what the terrarium is you know, doesn't know even hydrogen is the first element. You know, people that aren't ed too much educated in, educated in science and don't really care about it all too well, but they do care about their health. So, so I think, uh, you know, I guess uh, I'm giving you a kind of roundabout answer, and and I guess my answer is that these things, these things ultimately take time, and it takes a few brave people to really push the envelope forward. In fact, when I found Dr. Ogun's paper, 2007, this is a, this is a. This is a, a dean of pharmacology at a university. This is a, he's got two doctorates. This is somebody right. that worked for two years. I know personally worked two years to show how uh, what's called the ATP synthase nanomotor, the most beautiful, the most, the most incredible, most awe-inspired nanomachine in nature that's right. inside our mitochondria that actually makes the ATP in our bodies. It's a little motor generator that is the most incredible thing you can ever study because there's no way that through the pat through basic evolution that this that this motor would have ever been put together randomly it's like saying here's a block of here's a block of aluminum how many billions of years before it evolves on its own and in into into an internal combustion engine it's just not going to happen so we have this intelligent design nano motor and it shuttles these protons and it causes this motor to spin and as it spin it causes it generates atp okay uh, we can you can learn more about it. It's really quite fascinating. But the 
but the but the gist of it is that it shuttles protons every 15 seconds that proton is a proton deuterium pair called a deuteron it has that extra neutron and that causes that that damages this motor this motor spins at 9000 rpm uh, at perfect efficiency nothing we can't make a motor that that good um, at its optimal so every 15 seconds when you have this when you have this deuterium it's got a round round hole for a proteum but you got this thing that's twice the size so it causes it to shear causes it to stop and torque and ultimately this this destroys this delicate relationship between the gradient and the inner and the inner membrane space and the outer membrane space. You get proton leakage. Then you get signals that say, shut it all down, shut it down, stop this mitochondria, stop this cell, you know, and eventually you go into apoptosis when the cell dies and you have less yeah. cells, less mitochondria as you get older. So we try to look at this thing, this energy, this energy mechanism. And then we come to this conclusion, which Dr. Ogun realized you got this mechanical problem there's there's everything you do all the food you eat all the water you drink will ultimately give you a net energy deficit and only by the removing the deuterium that's already in your body to lessen the impact lessen the wear and tear on the mitochondria can you give yourself a net energy benefit there's nothing else that will give you a net energy benefit at the very at the very end of the equation beautiful now, so I would ask, or not argue, uh, but I would posit that you are there are ways to improve mitochondrial function, you know, in addition to removing deuterium, right? And so, I will tell like, you what those are. I will tell yeah. you absolutely what those are because there's not many. <laughs> right. Well, we'll, we'll share what they are. I mean, obviously, I'm a big guy. I talk about this all the time. Uh, you know, that is the big new frontier, I think, in age management, not anti-aging, or as you said, you, what did you say? Youth? What was the pro word? Youth thing? Pro you think. Pro you think. Yeah. Pro age youth management, thing. whatever. You know, I call it Very full close. optimization, fully optimized health. But, uh, but that is the thing, right? Like all the, the front, the new frontier right now, Victor, is people looking at, um, you know, adjuvants that can improve mitochondrial function, uh, density, uh, you know, resistance against antioxidant degradation, uh, obviously, you know, pro, uh, I mean, uh, anti-inflammatory, uh, just all of these different things. And so, you know, I'm interested in your feedback as to what is truly out there right now, in addition to removing de deuterium from the cells, what else can help enhance mitochondria? When you look at mitochondrial health, uh, you're, you're seeing that you, you just, you look at it, you look at it from, um, from just the optics of a just logical optics and you say okay what does this thing run on okay well it runs on glucose and it, and it can run on it can run on ketones okay and and these break down ultimately to the proton that spins that motor right okay so then you look at then you look at like i said the mitochondrial water the, the metabolic water that's inside your cells and you say okay well this water is 60 to 70 percent reduced in deuterium Right. So obviously everything in the mitochondria, the Krebs cycle is so complicated or the St. Georgie cycle, citric acid cycle, whatever you want to call it. It's so complicated yep. because it's, it's, it has all these series of gates that's trying to keep deuterium out of this electron transport chain, right? Being the motor, the nanomotor, ATP synthase nanomotor being at the end of this chain. Right. So this is your mitochondria. So, so mitochondria, you want, what do you want? You want membrane integrity. You want, you want solid membrane. So there's no leakage because when there's no leakage, you have a, you have a solid, you have a gradient. What causes those protons to spin is this difference in electrical potential, which wants, you know, which causes, causes a, um, which causes it try to balance out. So the protons want to go where there's more, they want to go to where's less, just like, just like, just like, uh, you know, you, you learn in basic science and chemistry class. So, so more metabolic water increases the health of the mitochondria, healthier ATP synthase nanomotors increase the health of the mitochondria. And what, and what achieves this? Well, red light stimulates this red light creates uh, photonic stimulation, which increases uh, mitochondrial health. Also the type of food you give your body. So we know that you produce about four times more ATP in the electron transport chain from ketone bodies than you do from glucose. So, and in nature, fat is more deuterium depleted than carbohydrates. That's nature's strategy. It will put the deuterium in the carbs and it will keep the deuterium out of the fats. So a ketogenic diet is in fact very complementary to deuterium depletion. 
and it actually keeps your deuterium in check as well. Eating less and fasting, again, like I said, the more food you consume, the more net energy deficit you have at the end. So fasting right. becomes a great strategy. Fasting is also a great way to optimize your body's ability to create metabolic water. So before I started this company, I was really, really into dry fasting, where you go uh, with where you go number of days without food or water. So because you, you want to dry out that interstitial tissue, create a hormetic right. effect, so you could have so uh, uh, so autophagy can really can really work for you uh, in a much um, in a, in a way that's more sped up than when you than you when you fast on just water alone. So I went six days, 144 hours without food or water, and really understood from an experiential standpoint what hydration and dehydration actually means. So these are the things that will increase mitochondrial health. Fasting, you don't have to go extreme, you don't have to go crazy, but intermittent fasting, ketogenic diet, simply because you'll have less wear and tear on your mitochondria and produce more ATP and red light stimulation, photonic stimulation. These are the proven, these these are proven to increase mitochondrial health. And then when you, and these will do it even without uh, using deuterium depleted water. The beauty of deuterium depleted water, it's like the ultimate hack. It's the ultimate cheat because, because as you consume deuterium depleted water through the mechanism known as hydrogen exchange, you will start flushing out the deuterium in your body. So if you combine it with all those things, DDW, Fast, intermittent fasting, ketogenic diet, uh, more fats in your diet, more red light exposure. This right here is going to is going to like it's it, it, this is going to make you what 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 we can define right now without any kind of you know science fiction definition, but but superhuman, you know. And what I mean by superhuman is somebody that can live their whole entire life without ever getting on pharmaceutical drugs. Can be just as just as mentally cognizant, physically capable at any age of their life. And I have friends like this that are in their 70s and 80s and really have no mental or physical decline. And this is not necessarily from deuterium depleted water, but is because of this, what they don't even call it that because they don't know it. But in fact, they're living what is a deuterium depleted lifestyle. I love that because I say fully optimized lifestyle. So we have to start uh, using that. And I know one of those people, Robert Slovak, of course, um, who I had the pleasure of interviewing, who is the energy of, you know, guys in their thirties and forties, amazing guy. So I'm going to share the screen real quick here. For well, Robert, right. It's interesting. Robert, they had, he had a, I don't know if he told you the story, but uh, he had a bone density scan, you know, cause uh, he was talking to some doctor and doctor was so impressed with his knowledge. He says, Oh, let me, I own the, I got this center. We can, let's see where you're at. Right. So they scanned Robert, you know, he's going to be 76 soon. This was a couple, this was a couple years ago, but uh, in fact, he's gotten healthier since. And and the guy goes, "We got to do it again. We got an error here." He goes, "What's the error?" He goes, "This you've got you've got the highest bone density of anybody who ever tested. So this stuff works. You know, this simple this simple uh, lifestyle modification it works. It's not difficult. Uh, it can you know it's a little expensive because because uh, it's not our fault. It's just it's expensive to make. It's expensive to remove deuterium from water. And and if you uh, I can explain how we do that too." Yeah, we're going to get to there. I, so I just wanted to just, uh, you know, uh, let people know that uh, the date's wrong on there. But uh, we just published this actually live on uh, the Jay Campbell website while uh, Victor and I were doing this podcast. And this is a very profound, uh, probably about 7,500 word article uh, on understanding deuterium depleted water. And I am very, very certain that this is going to get around the world and a lot of people are going to read this. Um so I'm not going to screen it, but we'll put the link obviously into this podcast so that folks can find it and, and, and of course read it and find more information. Now, obviously the caveat is there is a limitation to your company, which is obviously again, drinklightwater.com, which you guys will have a uh, way to go and actually save and signing up through their subscribe and save program, which I highly recommend uh, to the end. But I want you to talk a little bit about the light water story. Sure. Absolutely. Well, I think it starts starts with me being born in uh, in the Soviet Union, and then coming to the U.S. when I was seven years old. I really went through the uh, through the American educational system, but uh, but when you I went home, guy. but when I went home, it was behind the Iron Curtain. So I kind of grew up in two cultures, one outside and one inside the home. But uh, uh, the story starts there because because uh, uh, you know I didn't I didn't grow I grew up. American, really, except, you know, the cultural identity with my parents and so forth, the Russian cultural identity there. 
but it, it but it but it was uh and i never never thought of it too much you know my parents uh, uh made sure i didn't uh, forget the language though uh so that became really important when robert and i went to russia in search of anybody making deuterium cleated water because that's you know imagine going to russia for your first time as an adult consider yourself an american but have this ability to speak the language so then um we went over there we found uh we, we found who somebody that's now become our our partner um in and and he and he had uh been working on this for uh for 18 years <laughs> you know to commercialize this process so and that's how light water was started we went over there we figured okay uh we helped him with the factory there and and uh he's producing and and we have a you know we have a we have a system for making it in fact we produce the the, the most deuterium depleted water in the world we take up, upwards of 97 percent of the deuterium out of the water not that you have to drink water that's 97 percent depleted deuterium we do that because it's easier to mix than and dilute with right. regular water so you can so you can affect a, a, a depletion because the because at the end of the day it's not about the water it's about getting deuterium out of your body or right. not even getting because you'll never get it all out but it's about right. reducing it by 15 to 20 percent and when you do that it's it's just profound it's incredible i mean it, it's it's cheating man i mean i go i live here i live uh, in lake tahoe area so i'm at seven thousand feet i go run up this very very steep hill a couple times a week i don't have to i mean i've got the physical cape I, I feel like i like i have the same kind of um physical stamina that i did in my 20s you know without effort you know back then i had back then i had to work at it i had to go out run every day exercise so i can keep it up now i don't even need to keep it up so it's almost like cheating in a way and and that's simply that's simply because i lowered the deuterium in my body so what that what that so what that translates to it translates into uh what's known as proton motive force. I love this term, it's very technical, proton motive force. So when you reduce the deuterium in your body, you have a, you have a theoretical, uh, theoretical increase of, of a five times proton motive force. Well, that's theoretical, but I can tell you that's two X for sure. I mean, can you imagine having twice the energy after, after one to three months of consuming water to just to, to decrease your deuterium, having twice the energy that you have now? How is that going to manifest for you? Well, for me, I'm already pretty healthy. So for me, it's it's uh, it's 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 amazing, but it's not as dramatic as somebody that's that's very unhealthy and they go through this process and then and then they get their health back and they go, oh my goodness, because because you 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 forget, you know, when you look at you when you look at a clock, you don't see the hour hand move, but then you but then you look at it again and the hour hand moved, you know, and it was one o'clock, now it's five. Whoa, what happened? Right. Same thing with our lives. You know, every year we have one percent decline, and all of our all of our functions, cardiovascular, metabolic, you know, everything. So, what if you didn't have that? What if you didn't yeah. and 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 did not have that? You have to you have to find the root cause of aging. And I think this is the closest we've come so far into understanding the root cause of aging. Obviously, it's more complicated than just reducing your deuterium, but right now this is the closest that we have. And this is why I think that Dr. Olgun uh, Dr. Borosh, that in the future, these, they're going to be, they're going to, they're going to, the discoveries they've made are worthy of a Nobel Prize because they're really moving the needle forward for all of us. Um, and so I'm moving it forward in, in the sense of creating a company and promoting it, but I'm passionate about this because it works. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, let, and, let, let, well, let's go a little bit deeper. I mean, your, your information is profound for sure. You know, this is a great show. And, and again, as always, I'm privileged and humbled to have you here. Um, I, I want to, to talk and go down deeper, um, back to how people can use the water, because again, that's always where we are today, right? Like you and I can get up here and geek out and talk about deuterium and, you know, the, the, the proton in the, in the cell and how it, you know, can, can motor through ATP and get become dysfunctional. But, uh, the, you know, the average person who watches this, is going to be like, holy shit, I know I need to get white water and I know I need to start buying it in large quantities. Now, how do I take that? And I combine that with my everyday, not tap right. water. Right. Well, yeah, maybe you got, maybe you got, maybe you have good tap water. I mean, some people do. It's not. Amazing. That's true. If you live in the Adirondacks or the Catskills in New York. I mean, York, there is you know, good tap water. water out there. There really is. But yeah, you're right. Not, not in California, probably. 
<laughs> but chances yeah. are, well, if you were somewhere mom, by Mount Shasta, maybe, you know, you're. That's true. There is good, tap, there is good tap water as long as they just leave it alone. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, but, no, you're right. You're totally right. I mean, but, but yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah, gener water. yeah, but generally we're 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 not we're not trusting of our uh, no we're not trusting of our overlords uh, making sure our <laughs> water supply is no. Is up <laughs> No, that, I okay, think that's so we, went, we, we, went, we got we got through the what we got through the why, we even we even touched on the when, and now we're getting to the how. Exactly. So, yeah. So uh, very easy. The how is very easy. You have to you have to you have to get more deuterium out of your body than you put in. <laughs> totally. So the way you do that is, you're going to be like we have a, we set up a lab called uh, deuteriumtest.com, and this is uh, we bought a very expensive piece of equipment to test your saliva or water any 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 liquids really and this tells you what your body level of deuterium is now it's going to be it's going to be about uh it's going to be very similar to what your drinking water is okay and and if you're and if you're consuming a lot of carbs and you're very unhealthy sedentary lifestyle it's going to be higher than the than the average of the water or the liquids you consume if you are if you are exercising a lot getting a lot of getting a lot of like i said you know a lot of sun uh high fat diet keto fasting you're going to be lower slightly lower a few points lower than the water that you consume but let's say if you live in los angeles the water there is 150 ppm you're going to be 150 ppm there is no filtration standard filtration process that will remove deuterium so your your filtered water is going to be the same exact thing uh, if you're getting a water that's a bottled water from a spring, chances are it's going to be about that too. If you're getting it from a glacial source, it's going to be slightly lower, which is a great thing because even a 5% delta is going to be lower. Like the water from glaciers like in Mount Shasta or British Columbia, it's going to be in the lower 140s or upper 130s. So that's fantastic compared to what you get in cities like New York, San Francisco, uh, LA, et cetera. So so what we do, we make this water that's 10 ppm. We make a 5 ppm too. That's not, I, it's a great water, it's in glasses, but it's, it's very expensive as your kind of workhorse for getting this deuterium out of your body. It's kind of, right. so, so we get this, so the most economical is we get this two liter, two liters of water and PET, we blow the plastic ourselves. We try to make sure that, you know, it's the safest we can have. Everything gets shipped under temperature controlled. You know, it's, we, it's, it's a necessary evil, unfortunately, the plastic. So, so two liters plastic, two liters, 10 ppm. Now, that 10 ppm, what you do is you combine that with the water you have. And so if you combine it equally, one to one in ratio, you get 80 ppm. If you combine it one to four, meaning you have four liters of your regular water combined to one liter of light water, which is four to one, you get 120 to 122 ppm, depending on your source water. So, and that's it, and anything in between that. So that's your therapeutic window. You can go between one to one and one to four. Some people go what, one to what five. What do you drink? What, what are you doing? I do 80, I do one to one. Um, that's kind of, because I, because, uh, but in the beginning, you don't need to. See, let's say, let's say, you, let's, say, let's say you drink 10 ppm straight. Some people drink it straight. They can afford it, they don't care. Uh, plus they don't, some people don't want to, they don't, they don't want to stop everything else they're consuming beer, milk, you know, coconut water. So like I said, if you have to balance it at the end of the day, you do the equation at the end of the day and ask yourself that I consume were the liquids that I consume today, less in deuterium or the same as I have in my body. So if it's less, you will drop. So let's say you drink 10 PPM straight or you drink 80 PPM or you drink 120 PPM. So non-diluted one to one diluted or one to four diluted. Well, in the beginning, it's not going to matter what you drink because you're right. only going to deplete 0.5 to one PPM per day. That's it. No matter what you drink, because your body's going to, it's only, it's not going to, there's only a certain amount that you're going to dump per day. And that's about a half PPM. So, so that's why I say, Hey, in the beginning, if you're healthy, slow and steady wins the race here, start one to four. If you don't want to, if you don't want to abandon some of the other things you do, like I'd like to drink, raw milk you know i like coconut water here and there so i go 80 i go a little bit lower so i know that at the end of the day i've consumed less deuterium than the water than, than i have in my body so now you will get down going down half a ppm to one ppm per day 
By the way, if you sweat, if you go to a sauna, you'll get you'll get you'll you'll uh, uh, deplete faster. Okay, so let me let me let me put it in the so this is all amazing, but let me put it in a biohacker, you know, a typical Jay Campbell viewer. So this person is metabolically flexible. They're literally doing uh, intermittent fasting with a combination of like probably targeted ketogenic dieting, right? They'll go 30 hours without food. And then the day that they eat, it'll be MCT oil and protein, right? So Sounds like me. <laughs> Sounds just like me. That's what I'm saying. See, you're a Jay Campbell follower. I didn't even I've been, know. Winter. I've been living so, this lifestyle lifestyle for 15 years. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, so someone who's in an infrared sauna twice a day between 30 and 45 minutes and sweating profusely, right? So again, doing all these biohacks using red light therapy, I mean, is there, I mean, it's basically what you just said. It's just doing exactly how you're doing it, but again, slow and steady wins the race. So, do, so yeah, so do that. Uh, you're, if you're really, you're, you're, you're really proactive like that uh, by uh, biohacking style, you can, you, you know, check, check within 30 to 45 days, check your deuterium levels. You should be around 120. Now, at that point, right. you could decide if that's where you want to stay or if you want to go lower. From my personal experience and the experience of others and from the science, the bulk of the impact on your, on your biology, on your mitochondria and your metabolism is in that first drop from 150 to 120. That's going to right. be the bulk of the amazing experience you're going to have. So one of the amazing experiences that someone will notice from 150 to 120, clearer thought processes, more energy, better sleep. Here's like the thing. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let's let's look at it. Let's look at it from the upstream. You know, we're at the source of the spring here, and everything else is downriver. Right. When you open up when you open up the floodgates a little bit, you got more energy. Where's that going to go? Some people that opens up detox methylation pathways that haven't sure. been open for years. Yeah. Other other people at the it just depends. Other people feel it cognitively. Uh, right. Most everybody has a similar kind of a similar experience where they get their sleep is more improved. Um, the metabolism drastically improves. Uh, I noticed that across the board. So there's all kinds of things. There's a lot of testimonials. I'm very reticent to share on a, on a program. Just because- share one. Just share one. Come on, Victor. We're boys. You can do it. Drop it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. No here's, what, here's what I'll share. Here's what I'll no share. Name. Because people call me with this, with these profound, like life-changing experiences all the time, and I can't share them because you know we got this uh, three-letter agency. You know, I got it. Down. Yeah. Oh, believe me, they are very, they're very aware of the Jay Campbell podcast. So no name. <laughs> is, that like, is he treating something? Is he diagnosing? <laughs> is he curing? Is that a cure? Bro, I have the disclaimer: the FDA has not approved any of these statements we don't cure we don't advise we only simply say hey if it was me here's what i would do right if it was me this is what i would do you know um you know if you're like me and i know i am so (laughs) so but i will share this so dr borosha released a study in march uh this is published in uh uh, sage journals uh, cancer control and uh this was uh this was actually a study that was done a number of years ago uh, and it was done over a period of time because they needed to get a large enough cross section study done in Hungary, oncological study uh, on cancer. Okay, the big C word. And now in this particular case, I don't mind talking about it because they were using it as an adjuvant, sure. meaning they had they had people that were either on chemo or right. were or were uh, terminal, meaning meaning they just they just signed them off. You know, right. like, we're not going to do anything to you. You're just going to die. Right. So. And so they had a control group. I think in this in this particular study, is 86 uh, people, 30 of which were did not consume sterum depleted water, and 30 that did. Anyway, in the end, cut, uh, in the end, long story short, there was a there was a uh, there was a 10x survivability of those that depleted their deuterium versus those that didn't. So your te- your set your your survivability if your if your survivability on terminal cancer is increased by deter by depleting your deuterium, my goodness, everybody should be doing it. Unfortunately, it's not enough for everybody, but it really supports the argument that cancer is a metabolic disease because you increase the metabolic energy, the mitochondrial energy, it will you will able you will be able to outrun outrun whatever neoplasm you have. Obviously, it's that's simplifying it. It's very complicated. But the point is, this study exists. 
uh, it's published, and it's and it's one of no, one of numerous ones that shows that depleting your deuterium as an adjuvant to whatever you're doing is going to do is going to help whatever you're doing. It's going to make it work better. Um, and that and there's simple biological explanation for this. It's just not you can't. It's very. I I love speaking to uh, doctors on this subject because they get it right away. It's just nothing you you can't you know you can't challenge something that's a mechanical problem. Right. So, so this is, uh, uh, to me, this is like, it's so, it's so profound. It's the most, it's the most, um, important biological discovery of, of our age. And, uh, and, and certainly I get challenged by this and I say, just try it, try it for yourself. What do you have to lose? You know, I mean, well, I, I believe agree with you. You, you, you're, you're not, you're, t you're preaching to the choir. I mean, again, I was so profoundly moved by the information that I found out about this after I first talked to Robert. And then I started researching this on my own. I mean, I was completely mind blown. I remember I was sitting on a plane reading, you know, some of the information that I had, and then I've been doing some Google searches. And by the way, Google has not yet suppressed this yet, but maybe, Maybe in a couple of weeks. No, I'm just kidding. Give it, a, give it, give it some time. They certainly suppress <laughs> the Wikipedia page of it. I agree with you. 100%. Well, well, we can't, we're, we're, for one, we're no threat to anybody. Certainly, right. because one, right. we don't have enough. We hardly have any. You know, in the grand scheme of things, we don't. We can't make enough of this. And uh, and two, it's just a, it's just a lifestyle modification. It's not a, it's not a cure. But the cure, you are the cure. The body's a self-healing exactly. organism. It just needs the exactly. energy. It just needs the energy and the information, and then yep. and then and then it's off and then it's off to the races, you know. So it's a it's and uh, you know like you're blown away by this. I'll tell you. I'll I'll share with you what real what blew me away uh, when I started studying this originally, and uh, and that was I was trying to find any information in the literature all around the world about deuterium depletion, right? And uh, so I did an exhaustive search. Uh, in fact, I have all these studies and everything that I found up on deuteriumdepletion.org. It's just a, uh, one place where you can go and just get everything that's that I have found that has ever been written on this in, in any language. So, so I found that uh, I found that the, uh, that these UFO contactees were talking about. I go, what? Right. Because you know, I, I'm because I was like reading on the science of it, the biochemistry, and all of a sudden it's like there's these two instances. Uh, 20 years apart of uh, two uh, contactees, you know, that claim to have communication with extraterrestrials, uh, putting it in their in their writings in the, in a particular book, and uh, and so in the, in this in this book, um, this guy, the this author talks about uh, this is 19 this is uh, 1993, uh, uh, well, uh, author by the name of Wes Bateman, and uh, and uh, he talks about uh, asking these extraterrestrials you know, how they live so long and we can barely crack a hundred and they look so young and all that. And they said, Oh, well, it's, you got a problem on your planet. You got, you have too much deuterium. Isn't and, that uh, amazing? I thought, I thought that was really neat because this guy is, this guy wasn't, you know, this is in the early nineties. And then the other one was in 1973. So this is kind of like independent verification of something cross correlation of sources that, that were not, that had no, that had no, um, communication and among themselves so to me it's like wow this is it's like our space brothers are telling us hey <laughs> you got a you got a little problem here so <laughs> you just had to go tinfoil at the end of the show didn't you you just I, know, I, had I, to I, I have to because i love the unexplainable <laughs> bro <laughs> it's the jay campbell podcast all i talk about is aliens and reptilians and stuff you're, you're right at home man we're we're, we're good i love we're this good. stuff you know, i i've been studying antediluvian history for 30 years right. so i love i love this stuff and in fact if you look at it you you look at the uh history of the patriarchs in the bible and you see that at some point there was this there was this you know these patriarchs lived to a thousand years you know adam and on right. Noah, right. and then after the flood, their lifespan started going down to what they are relatively now. One hundred. They flooded years. the planet with deuterium, bro. It did, it did, it did. Just a little bit, just a little bit more, just a little, tiny little bit more than you should have is just is just going to wreak havoc. So just reduce it a little bit, just get it down, and then man, you're going to have the life that you were meant to have. Free I'm going to text. I'm going to text Slovak and said he had to do it, dude. We just didn't add that it was the Anunnaki. It was the only thing that we didn't add to it. <laughs> I don't, I, I think they were, 
I think they, <laughs> I think if they had their way, if they had their way, they'd be keeping this from us. So <laughs> yeah, no, that's absolutely true. Well, man, listen, brother, this has been a profound podcast. Let me actually put the link up so people can um, take advantage of signing up and subscribe and save. So guys, uh, already a lot of you who follow me are already on this path, you know, in our private group, this link has been up there for about three weeks now, but now and when this gets out to the public for anybody, uh, who finds this podcast fascinating as you should, as well, you should, um, there is a way to take, uh, I think it's, what is it? Uh, $20 off a case. And then if you sign up for the subscribe and save a, a couple of cases, it actually becomes a 20% discount. So it's a superstar rock star deal. Get, get on this path. You know, obviously I'm subscriber and saver. Um, I know tons of other people. I literally just had a guy text me a screenshot of the light water, you know, on his desk and he's got it like marked and stuff like that. So where he knows to change it and stuff like that. But I mean, everyone Victor should, in my opinion, if you're concerning with yourself of living the longest and strongest that you can, I mean, this is what better technology can you employ than light water? It's such a, it's such a simple intervention um, that you can do. And it has such a profound impact. Um, I mean, you change your water, change your life, right? That's what we, yeah. that's what we've, that's what we've come to understand and realize. And uh, we now know that uh, there's another level of water purification that exists and that's the, and that's the removal of, uh, of deuterium or the lowering of deuterium in the water. So it's a profound, profound intervention. I really thank you for having me on your show and uh, sharing this with your listeners and your and your viewers. And uh, this is all this is all going to help us uh, to get to the point where we can build a factory in the United States to create this, to make this. Because it's just not the, the technical side of this. That's what, we didn't talk about it, but it's just that it, what it had to be achieved to to figure out how to remove this deuterium from water. I mean that in and of itself is a is a, a engineering feat that uh, is uh, um, shouldn't you know that should, that should definitely be applauded as well. So it's here um, now. People ask me, who, you know, who should drink this water? Who the customer is? And I, and I, 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 have a very, I have a very clever answer to this, and it's it's everybody who can afford to drink it, and everybody who can't afford not to drink it, right. because there are people. There are. Uh, people among you that you can't afford not to take this, you know, you, you, you absolutely, it exists. You should do it. <laughs> well, so look, I always say, and I've been saying this for four years, you know, when I speak to researchers and scientists and various doctors, you know, who recommend, you know, what people, some, you know, people of average means would consider expensive. But I always say, look, if you cannot afford to spend five, between five and $10,000 a year on your personal health, then you have your priorities completely out of whack. And obviously it's far below this. It's, you know, just having a subscribe and save package to Lightwater, it's far below that. So again, don't come to me or Victor or anyone like us and say that you can't afford this. You cannot afford, you can't afford not to drink light water. You can't afford not to. But again, being being that person that always like to likes to offer a solution for problem uh, or various solutions, even if you don't have deuterium depleted water, just follow the deuterium depleted lifestyle, and that exactly. alone that alone yep. will, will make an incredible uh, impact on your on your health in a positive way. Awesome, Victor. Thank you. So, for all of you guys that watch the Jay Campbell podcast, of course, support the amazing people drinklightwater.com. You can see the link right here in that. And then of course, remember to use code J A Y C. Remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys all very soon. <laughs>